love the disability pride flag because July is disability pride month. LGBTQI plus disabled folks deserve just as much, if not more, visibility, representation, and celebration as the rest of the LGBTQI plus community gets during Pride Month in June. The disability pride flag was a collaborative design by Anne McGill with feedback from within the LGBTQI plus disabled community. The black field represents rebellion and protest as well as mourning and rage for those who are victims of ableist violence. One of my favorite parts of this flag are the five colors that represent the following. Invisible and undiagnosed disabilities, physical disabilities, neurodivergence, psychiatric disabilities, and sensory disabilities. The parallel stripes represent solidarity and all the differences within the LGBTQIA disabled community. The diagonal band represents light cutting through the darkness and cutting across barriers that separate disabled folks. Share this video to help spread the word and bring light and celebration to Disability Pride Month. Today's the day. Today's the day. Oh, can't wait. And I wonder what all the major brands are saying. I wonder what the celebrities are tweeting. What? Nothing. What's that? Even though disabled people are 20% of the world's population, we're completely overlooked in pop culture and media. Happy Disability Pride Month. Did you know that July is Disability Pride Month? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name's Allison. I have a connective tissue disorder called hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and I'm disabled. First things first, what is a disability? A disability is any mental or physical condition that limits a person's movements, activities, or senses. So that would describe somebody with like parosmia, somebody who doesn't have the sense of smell. They're limited in their sense of smell. That's a disability. Or it could be like depression that's incredibly disabling that limits your activities, movements, and senses. Disability Pride Month is held to recognize the passing of the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, which was on July 26th of 1990. With that being said, Disability Pride Month is celebrated around the world, not only in the United States. And Disability Pride Month actually has its own flag. This is actually not the original Disability Pride flag. The original Disability Pride flag featured zigzags in the lines which was actually inaccessible to some disabled people. So they changed it to these nice solid lines to make it a little bit easier on everyone's eyes and to make it accessible for all disabled people. You'll also notice that they muted the colors of the disability pride flag. The zigzags and the bright colors were not good for people with like seizures or migraines, for example. So this new flag is accessible to all disabled people. Anne McGill was the creator of the original disability pride flag as well as this updated disability pride flag. And everything on this flag serves a meaning. Let's talk about it. So the reason these lines are at a diagonal is because Anne wanted to do something in contrast to the vertical lines and horizontal ceilings that keep disabled people isolated. And the lines start in the upper left corner, which is considered the canton or place of honor, and they end in the right corner, which is the fly, which represents the wider world. And all of these colors each represent a different type of disability. And remember, hating your disability and having disability pride are not mutually exclusive. You can dislike your disability, but also have pride in it at the same time. I hope this helps. Happy Disability Month. I love you all. Bye. So, apparently, we have a Disability Pride Month. I was not aware of this. Well, I am now. Disability is not an aberration. It's not abnormal. Disability is a part of human diversity. It's what makes us, us. Just like some of us have brown or blue eyes. Some of us are blind or deaf. And this month we get to celebrate that. Hi, I'm disabled. Did you mean differently abled? Handy capable. A warrior. Disabled. Person of abilities that are less and also not good. Defable. Hindered. Challenged. Enabled. Special needs. I know, you're a superhero. Just disabled is fine, it's not a dirty word. Hello people of YouTube, welcome to today's video. Today's video is about Disability Pride Month and before there was like TikToks of people talking about Disability Pride Month because I thought it'd be nice to include instead of just me talking about it. First of all, happy Disability Pride Month. 
disability do I have? Well, I have autism, which affects me every day of my life. I was born with it and I'm going to die with it. And I also have a learning disability that was picked up in school because I always struggled in school. It probably still affects me in some ways today. Like, I still need support with certain stuff, but I don't know if that's more my autism. It might be more that as well. There's a few times people said, oh, you're autism, you're learning disability or whatever, but I don't know per se with that. There's a lot of stuff I need help with because of my autism as well. And I struggle with things like maths. So I know there's a misconception of autistic people being really good at maths. Not all of us are. I really struggle with it. No matter how hard I try at maths, I can never grasp it. And I've always like wondered if I have the like, maths learning disability, but I'm like, I don't know. I just put it down to my learning disability. And plus you can't be good at everything, realistically. Like I'm good at certain stuff. Like I'm good at making videos and video editing. I'm good with technology and computers. I'm good with like Kirby, one of my special interests. So is like YouTube. That's why I've got so much Kirby shit, because it's like one of my special interests. And I might make an updated Kirby collection soon if you guys would like that. And yeah, I love stuffed toys. I don't give a shit how old I am. This is the biggest mess of all octopus I have. They're not very happy right now. What's up? I also have a bit of anxiety, which I guess those are my disabilities. And my anxiety comes with my autism. I love all the time. I thought I'd make a video about disability pride month because not a lot of people know about it. That's why I changed my profile picture to be the disability pride flag. That's what that is. I've had a few people ask me, what pride flag is that? And they might think it's something to relate to LGBTQ+. Which, again, I can see how you can see that. But no, it's a disability pride flag. I put that to strip well, all disabilities. As I've made videos on about autism in the past. I haven't in a while because I simply just don't know what videos to do with based on autism. If you guys have any suggestions, like let me know. Yeah, there's many a times people have said, oh, you don't look autistic, you don't seem autistic, oh, you seem really independent and all that, which is not true. There's one, nobody can seem autistic. All of us mask. I don't think I do tend to mask these days, unless I do sometimes without realizing, I don't know. But I don't think I tend to as much, or if I ever did, I don't know. That's probably why a lot of people might not seem autistic because they might mask or they're not in a situation where or I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. I've had that. I'm like, what does that mean exactly? Or you don't look autistic. Like, no. We look like anybody else. And I am proud to be autistic generally. There is days, I will admit, I wish I was more like a non-autistic person or I just wish I could just do shit normally. But nah. It's part of who I am. I can't change it. But I am mostly like proud to be autistic. Like, is this quote back in 2015 that actually made me cry and it made me love my autism? I was really in a dark time where I hated my autism, I just wish I was normal and all that shit. What is normal anyway? Normal is fucking boring. I'm proud to be me. Nowadays, if somebody said to me, do you want me to take away your autism? I'd say no, because it wouldn't be me without, it wouldn't be me without autism. I wouldn't be Cassie. It's part of who I am. I don't want to change that even if I could. And I can't change that anyway, but if I could, I wouldn't. Yeah, it sucks at times and it makes my life hard at times, but without it, it legit would not be me. It does make life hard a lot of the time. I wish I could just understand so sarcasm more and jokes more. It depends on the person with that sort of stuff. I wish I could understand social cues more, but yeah, I try my best every day. This ties in, I remember talking to somebody, I'm not gonna say who, this was in my real life. Some people are like, well, you go to socials and you're like seem very independent and whatever, he said. I'm like, well, I need socials because I'm actually not independent whatsoever. I cannot just go leave the house and do whatever. I wish I could. I wanna work my way up to that. Some people just look at me and think that I can do all that. I was like, I can't, I'm not really independent. I worry about getting lost a lot. Like, I need need sociables because if it wasn't for that I legit would be stuck in my bedroom all the time. Honest to god. I'd be on my PC like all the time or my laptop or whatever the fuck. Now I am on my days off but it's okay because I'm allowed to do what I enjoy doing like going on my computer, making videos, video editing, you know whatever. If I didn't have sociables I would be like that 24-7 and I used to be. I don't want to go back to that because I, I don't want to be going back to having no friends or feeling like I've got no friends. That's why I have sociables and there's a video on how sociables helped me if you want to go check that out. Autism is not a bad thing. And also disability is not a bad word by the way. I hate the term special needs. It just makes it sound really bad. I hate it. The word handicapped, even though I don't never really called that. I'm not really keen on the R word. Uh, the N word. I'm not even going to say the slurs because I'm not, I don't say slurs. Never ever get me to say any kind of slur. <laughs> Oh, shit. I went over my Kirby blanket. Stay hydrated, kids. You know what also helps with hydration? Here's a tip. Get a cute bottle like this. It really does help. Trust me. Yeah. Autism. I also love fidget toys. They help a lot. Again, if you want to see my fidget toy collection, you can watch that. Fidget toys help a lot, you know, if I'm a bit stressed or anxious or whatever. Or if I just want to fidget or stim, then that's what they're great for. I'm not, like, anxious right now, but I'm just playing with it because I just want to stim. I also love stuffed toys. I've always have done. I know some people might think I'm weird, but I don't care. I like to hug a stuffed toy to feel safe. Or just for a bit of comfort. 
outfit and you know just well, I don't know I guess it's like a sensory thing it's quite nice this isn't my favorite one to cuddle because it's quite small I like squishmallows are my go-to this is my most recent squishmallows you guys are oh my god squishmallows are like the best invention ever they're dangerous for me I just see them and I'm like a really cute one I'm like I have to hug it squishmallows are amazing I like hugging them a lot I just don't give a shit how old I am even as a kid I was never into dolls figurines always into stuffed toys always have my favorite Charlie and Megan and I still got to this very day upstairs and as I talked about my special interests they are a big part of my life like YouTube filming obviously doing these socials YouTube my YouTube you know editing is everything I have so much curvy shirt every time I, st I draw something I always normally end up drawing curvy though I always think I need to get back into drawing but I don't know the thing I want to draw at the moment I want to draw the disability pride flag a lot of my friends have disabilities and I think that's why I get on so well with them especially the ones that are autistic or kind of have that in common and we kind of understand each other more than people outside of that wouldn't understand so much it's great to have friends like that because they understand you whereas if you have like people that are non-autistic they don't always understand or they think you're rude and all that I've had that many a time i just say shit how it is and i'd rather be honest than tell you lies say shit how it is some people think i'm rude for that or if i say something because i don't know how else to word it so i'll just say it how the only way i think to say it and i might like, overthink after and i'm like i'm not being rude because sometimes people tell me off and i'm like i've got that drilled in my head i guess and i'm like i'm not being rude i'm not trying to be rude there's a lot of times i've said something and someone's told me off i'm like what and i'm really confused i didn't mean it like that i said it or people think i'm being sarcastic i'm like i barely understand sarcasm as it is why would i be sarcastic like yeah there's times that I probably can be but mainly with my close friends or i'm joking around sort of thing so some people are like oh you're not rude but i get that a lot in my well, on the internet and real life i'm like i'm not trying to be rude mate i actually am so, yeah i could ever think a lot about that kind of stuff that's why i get on better with other autistic people i have loads of my friends that just say it how it is and, and i love that and i, I really love when people say it how it is because you just say what you mean and that's what i like i don't like when people say something and they mean something completely different and it really confuses me as an autistic person i'm like just say what you mean some people might think i'm good at communicating i'm not saying i'm bad at it it's just understanding social cues and all that kind of stuff being able to say the right thing is difficult for me as an autistic person i can talk though i never used to be the case i was late talking when i was younger my, i asked my mom this i said was i late talking and what and she said you were late with everything like walking talking and everything and that was a big sign i was probably autistic you know, my mom didn't know anything about autism at the time i was only diagnosed with selective mutism because i went moot when i was younger i grew up moot i mean i wasn't non-verbal because i could talk to my mom and my nanny mac and that and my brother and my dad and that was probably about it when it comes to outside like in school i never used to speak like in nursery i never had friends i never used to speak that was because of my selective mutism i actually couldn't speak i didn't know you had to make friends back then so i used to play with myself and i was happy you know what i mean like, i never really had many friends growing up even in first school they never used to upset me because i didn't know i was meant to make friends and i was happy by myself in first school i only had one or two friends and that was about it because i found it really hard to make friends I and mean, i still can if it wasn't for social schools and the internet i would not be able to make friends now i love having friends and i grew up with selective mutism which is an anxiety disorder that you just go moot for specific people and specific situations and you don't get to choose that either i wish it was like that but no <laughs> it was horrid i don't have that as much now but this is what confuses me though because my mom was like you wasn't diagnosed with autism younger because you could you didn't speak and i was like well make that make sense because how do the non-verbal autistic people get diagnosed then because there is some people that are autistic who still can't speak to that but there's also the thing about autism in girls and stuff and i wasn't diagnosed until like 14 but i know a lot of my friends didn't get diagnosed until they're 20 and that and i had a feeling that a lot of my friends before they were diagnosed were autistic like i could sometimes tell not like tell but like autistic traits and, like, and i always thought i was weird for like being able to tell that but it's quite common actually more people are probably autistic than they probably realize same with adhd and this sort of stuff obviously you get tested and do your research it was thanks to high school picking my autism because i'll probably be going about my life and thinking what the fuck is wrong with me i feel like i was diagnosed quite late because a lot of people were diagnosed earlier but 14 somebody said that's quite young I'm like, i don't know some people get picked up when they're younger and that's why apparently i wasn't diagnosed any young because i didn't speak which makes zero sense to me and they just diagnosed me with that to me so well the school picked up had a learning disability the school picked that up in my first school and i had a ti i remember her she was lovely ti teaching assistant slash helper or pa or whatever it's different in different countries because i remember talking to my friend host who was in canada and they call it something completely different to what we call it i can't remember what they called it in canada he did tell me but we call it a ti in my country and i had a ti in college and school oh my god i remember college like legit saying again just this thing for me seeming and it's really annoying they just said oh you don't need help and i fucking well did because i struggled with processing shit and i struggled with proofreading and you know getting started on work and stuff and when teachers talk forever trying to process that in my brain and i completely forget when the teachers talk talking and i 
I get to try to get started, I'm like, what am I doing? I, that was what happened in college. People just thought I didn't need help because I seemed intelligent. I computers, but I did need, need a little, little bit of help. But yeah, it's just one of the things. My college just thought, oh, you seem... <laughs> no, I wasn't. Social's not so much, but sometimes I do. And I'm like, I do need help with this. Like, I'm generally because I wouldn't be asking for it if I didn't need it. I don't want to get all that stuff too much. I don't know what else to talk about. So, happy Disability Pride Month. Hope more awareness could be spread around. And that's what Disability Pride Month is all about. Like, opening up and being proud. And not so much being proud, just raising awareness more than anything. And it's part of who we are. You know, we're all human at the end of the day. Despite whatever disability you have, you're still human. And it's a shame, like, some people just overlook a lot of disabilities. Because I remember I come across a lot of this, like, disability TikTok stuff. Like, people with disabilities and that. And people just overlook them all the time. We're all human. Disability rights, I say. And I'm glad people can open up about the disabilities more thanks to things like TikTok. And I want to make a video about it. I don't know. I just I just see it on my TikTok occasionally. And I always repost them because I want you guys to see. If I see things like that on my TikTok, I always repost. Or see things like that on my Twitter every week. We deserve awareness and stuff. And you know, we're here. We're human. We're not going anywhere. And we're part of this earth. My camera stopped filming because it said it's too hot. And I haven't really filmed a proper long ass video on this vlogging camera. So any vlogging camera. I should use my Canon one. But yeah, I'm going to end this video here. So happy Disability Pride Month. Love you all. You're valid and you are awesome despite your disabilities so never forget that we are here we're not going anywhere i'm autistic i'm proud to be i'm gonna go bye guys